Hello guys, this is Sayyid Muhammad Lukas. I am back with another video. In this video, I will discuss about planar box sizing. So, before start uh, calculation for planar box sizing, uh, I want to tell you what is planar box and uh, why we need to install the planar box and uh, where we have to install the planar box. So, what is planar box? Planar box is a white but short length duct that is used to properly or uniformly distribute the air throughout the system. Also, why we need to install the planar box? There are many reasons that, that we need to install the planar box. First, to ensure the air is uniformly distributed throughout the system. Second, to reduce the velocity of discharging air. And uh, third is also to reduce the hissing sound created by discharging air just by dropping the velocity pressure. And also this planar box also facilitate the fresh and return air mixing when system is designed for the return air circulation. So now the question arises where we need to install the planar box. We need to install this planar box before air terminals could be supply diffusers or linear slotted air diffusers so we need to install before this uh, supply diffusers or linear slotted air diffusers this planar boxes need to be installed before them also we need to install these planar boxes uh, at the suction side at the suction end of the air side equipments like uh, air handling units and uh, fan coil units for the return and the fresh air also at the discharge and or the mouth side of the air side equipments so we need to install this planar boxes to air side equipments also at the suction side of the exhaust air fans so let's start the calculation of the planar box so what's the size required for the air handling unit so here you see the procedure over here we are going to use the simple equation that is Q is equal to VA here Q is the flow rate that is in cubic feet per minute and V is the velocity that is uh, cubic uh, that is uh, feet per minute and uh, A is the area of the planar box that is in square feet so this simple equation we are going to use to size the planar box so as per ASHRAE standard, the velocity required for the air handling unit planar box sizing is 800 FPM feet per minute. So we are going to use this velocity to size our planar box. So let's say we have calculated uh, the heat load and according to our heat load, the tonnage which we got is 8 TR. If you want to know how we have to calculate the heat load, you can check my tutorial number 16 and 17 in which I have explained the, how you can calculate the heat load using HAP software and E20 form. So uh, we are going to use our rule of thumb here that is uh, 1 TR required 400 CFM. So we have an ATR system. So how much is the CFM we needed over here for ATR system? That is 8 into 400. That is 3200 CFM that we needed over here. So according to this equation, Q is equal to VA. Now we have uh, flow rate 3200 CFM. And we know the velocity required for planar box sizing of the air handling unit is 800 fpm so as per this equation q is equal to va we know q and we know v so we can calculate the area by a is equal to q divided by v q is the flow rate that is 3200 cfm and uh, v is the velocity that is 800 so 3200 divided by 800 uh, we got the area 4 square feet so area of the planar box that needed over here is 4 square feet so before moving to this equation number 2 the area of the planar box that is width into height I'll show you one figure over here this is the figure so let's say this is uh, the planar box of the air handling unit 
as you can see that this is the width this is the height and this is the depth of the planar box and this is the opening that will be connected to the air handling unit side suction side so this is the weight this is the height and this is the depth so we need to calculate these uh, parameters weight height and depth of the planar box so let's move back to our equation 2 so area of planar box is given as weight into height so now we have to assume the height as per site condition we need to assume the height so let's say we have a space above ceiling and below slab is 2.5 feet or something let's suppose we have 2.5 feet space between the ceiling and the slab so according to this we need to assume the height of the planar box so let's say we are assuming the height of the planar box is 1.6 feet so this is the height we have assumed over here so as we know the area of the planar box that's already calculated 4 square feet and height we assumed over here is 1.6 feet so using equation 2 we know the width we know the height and we know the area so we are going to calculate the width of planar box that is given as a by h so width of the planar box is area divided by height of planar box area is 4 square feet and uh, height is 1.6 so width of the planar box is calculated as 2.5 feet that is 4 divided by 1.6 so now we have width of planar box that is 2.5 feet and we have height that is 1.6 feet now we have to calculate this depth of this planar box so depth of the planar box is given by this equation that is 2.5 times d now what is d over here d is basically a diameter of the fan blower of the air handling unit so let's say we have a air handling unit of 3200 cfm with the diameter of the fan blower is 12 inches and this in this formula d equal to 2.5 into 3 it could be 3 3 times d so 2.5 to 3 you can use over here so we are going to use 2.5 over here and uh, uh, we assume that diameter of the fan blower is uh, 12 inches so by using this value in equation 3 so depth of the planar box is 2.5 times 12 that is 30 inches if you want to convert this in a feet divided by 12 and you will get the depth of the planar box 2.5 feet so now we have so we have calculated width height and depth so depth is 2.5 feet width is 2.5 feet and the height which we have assumed is 1.6 feet so this is how we can do the planar box sizing for air handling unit so if you want to do the planar box sizing for the fan coil unit FCU so you can do that also the only thing over here is velocity uh, that is limited to 500 feet per minute 500 fpm so the whole procedure is same except the velocity that is 500 feet per minute so by using this velocity 500 feet per minute you can do the planar box sizing for the fan coil units so this is how you can do the planar box sizing so a planar box uh, uh, we need to install for properly or uniformly distributed distribution of the air throughout the system so so this is how you can do the in this video I will tell you guys how to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient U value for the wall for uh, outer wall and for the inner wall or partition walls so let's start uh, let's say we have uh, a building where outside wall composition is given as this that uh, building consists of combination of different layers that is 230 mm common brick plus air space plus 230 mm common brick and uh, 23 26 mm that is 13 mm both sides and cement plaster 
so as you can see in this figure if you will see this k1 is basically representing as our uh, brick 230 mm this h naught is over here representing as the outside film coefficient then we have a uh, ka that is the air space over here or air gap over here and then we have k2 representing the second uh, brick over here that is 230 mm then hi is the inside film coefficient so this is the general formula which we basically use to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient ULU. So as you know the composition of the wall. So this is the thermal conductance values which are given over here. These values you can find uh, uh, most probably in ASHRAE Fundamentals 1997 or any version you can find the thermal conductance values. So you just need to pick these values and then calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient so let's say uh, we have this uh, building composition or uh, outer wall combination then uh, thermal conductivity of the brick is given as k brick 0.77 thermal conductivity of plaster is given as 8.65 and uh, thermal conductance of the air gap is given as 5.8 outside film coefficient is given as 23 inside film coefficient is given as 8.5 and this x1 and x2 values x1 is basically 13 mm over here as you can see 13 mm is the sand cement plaster on both sides of the brick so in order to convert this into meter you need to divide by 1000 you will get 0 0.013 so x2 is basically the thickness of this brick that is 30 mm in order to convert this into a meter you need to divide by 1000 so you will get 0.23 so these are the thickness of the plaster x1 is the thickness of plaster x2 is the thickness of the brick so as you see this is the formula which we are going to use this is general formula 1 divided by 1 by h0 plus x1 divided by k1 plus uh, 1 divided by k plus x2 divided by k2 so on up till 1 divided by hi so you know that this h0 and hi are the outside and inside film coefficients and this x1 and x2 already explained you these are the thickness of the plaster and uh, brick so if you have um, any uh, insulation material or anything is added in your wall you need to add these values to get the overall heat transfer coefficient so this is the formula 1 divided by h0 so if we are going to put the values over here so 1 divided by 1 by h0 h0 is given as uh, outside film coefficient is 23 so we have used 1 divided by h0 is 23 plus this the second uh, if you see this this is the wall composition over here then we have sand cement plaster over here then we have brick so sand cement plaster over here this side uh, and uh, sand cement plaster its thickness is 0 0.013 so 0 0.013 divided by its thermal conductance value plaster conductance value is 8.65 so 13 divided by 8.65 13 convert this into meter 0 0.013 divided by 8.65 then this then the next one we have this uh, after plaster we have the brick over here and brick thickness is 230 mm that is 0.23 so 0.23 divided by thermal conductance of the brick that is 0.77 so 0.23 divided by 0.77 and then we have the air gap over here that is ka so 1 divided by ka in this formula so 1 divided by ka Ka value is 5.5 you can see the thermal conductance of the air gap is 5.8 and then we have uh, this again we have a brick over here then sand cement plaster and then inside film coefficient here so brick first 230 mm 230 mm divided by 1000 divided is equal to 0.23 meters the thickness divided by thermal conductance of the brick is 0.77 plus then we after brick we have this uh, cement over here 
and cement thickness is 0.013 meter divided by thermal conductance of the plaster is 8.65 plus 1 divided by HI. HI is the inside film coefficient and its value is 8.5. So 1 divided by 8.5. So we have applied all the values over here. So after putting all the values, U uh, overall heat transfer coefficient U of the wall is calculated as 1.07 watt per square meter Kelvin. As you can see, if I double click, I already applied the formula here. So this is how you can calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient U value of the wall. And this is for out, outside wall. So next is I will show you it is the same procedure but uh, still I will show you the inner wall partition wall U value calculation so as you can see that our interior or partition wall consists of 230 mm common brick with 26 mm 13 mm sand cement plaster on both sides so in this case there is no air gap we have just uh, outside film coefficient then sand cement plaster then brick and then sand cement plaster and then we have this inside film coefficient so this there will be no uh, there is only one break over here as you can consider this part only like outside film coefficient sand cement plaster then the break and then sand cement plaster and then we have this HI inside film coefficient this is not here so same formula which we are going to use over here so 1 divided by 1 by H0 outside film coefficient value 1 divided by H0 that is 8.5 you can see over here outside film coefficient outside film coefficient is uh, over here that is uh, 23 sorry this is 23 1 divided by 23 so plus we have a uh, cement thickness over here that is x divided by k1 cement thickness is 13 mm on this side one side and 13 mm on the other side so 13 mm convert this into meter you will get this 0 0.013 meter divided by thermal conductance of the plaster that is 8.65 so inside film coefficient is uh, outside film coefficient is done then we have uh, uh, sand cement plaster is done then, then we have a brick and then sand cement plaster layer so brick thickness is 230 mm just one brick so 230 divided by 1000 that is 0.23 meter divided by thermal conductance of this brick is 0.77 you can see 0.77 thermal conductance of the brick plus cement on the other side that is uh, 13 mm divided by thermal conductance of cement is same 8.65 plus 1 divided by HI inside film coefficient inside film coefficient is 8.5 so 8.5 over here so um, this is uh, how you have to put all the values and you will get the inside wall U value or partition uh, partition wall u value over heat transfer coefficient so as you can see that this is the formula i have already applied here so after adding all the values in here you will get the overall heat transfer coefficient u value of the inner or partition wall is 1.86 watt per square meter kelvin so this is how you can calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient u values uh, in the same way you can calculate if you know the material for the roof uh, floors those you can calculate the u values for every single material because these values u values or are it of a coefficient uh, that these are the things we are going to use in our uh, HVAC system design while we are designing our system this is very important parameter that needs to be uh, calculated first to calculate the heat transfer